It is always great to see when a when one topic under discussion leads to another one that is just as interesting as the original topic. And a good example of this is the video that I posted two days ago. Because I posted a video in which I addressed the problem of evil and the proposed Christian solution to that, claiming that God, even though he is omnipotent, cannot prevent evil because that would interfere with people's free will. But the approach that I took on this video was to point out that, well, there are plenty of physical restrictions in place that influence our ability to choose to commit certain acts of evil if we were so inclined. And with all those restrictions in place, you cannot really say that God has created a reality that should allow us to be evil if we wanted to. So the whole free will argument, the whole God doesn't want to restrict your choices argument falls flat on its face. But of course, when the term free will is used, a lot of people jump onto a completely different bandwagon, but one that is in actual fact just as interesting. And that is the whole, well, is free will actually real or not thing? And if you've been following my channel, you may know that I do subscribe to the notion that we have some kind of free will. But it is very important that you realize that I am qualifying that with some kind. I am not saying that we have free will and that's the end of it. I'm saying I am willing, I am pragmatic in this, right? And I like the phrase, I like the term free will. So I want that phrase to stand for something real, something that's usable. So it is a bit pointless to me to define free will as something pure and conceptually very pure that's out there in philosophical, metaphysical la-la land and then say, well, it isn't real and then dismiss it. I would much rather say, well, let's define the term free will as something that does exist in reality. And what can we do then? And what I've done is defined it more or less as follows. Free will, in my opinion, according to the way I define it, needs a number of constituent ingredients in order to be called that. First of all, I think it needs the agent's ability to consciously contemplate their own wants, needs and desires. So I need to have some awareness, some ability to consciously think about what I want and what I need and what I desire. That's the first ingredient that's needed. The second ingredient is an ability to look at your environment, to establish opportunities, establish what could be done in the environment in order to satisfy your need. For example, if I feel hungry and I'm consciously aware of the fact that I'm hungry, I can look at my environment and say, well, these are the ways in which I can satisfy that need. I can go to the shop, I can grab a sandwich out of a small child's hand, whatever. There are a lot of different options available to me. And then, of course, the final ingredient is my ability to pick from these options the one that I reckon is most likely to best satisfy my wants, needs and desires. And that is what I consider the combination of these three attributes or abilities is what I would consider to be free will. It doesn't need to be any more than that. And the important thing you need to realize is that there needs to be nothing pure about that. There needs to be nothing free from restriction about that. In actual fact, that definition of free will is completely compatible with a completely deterministic reality. 
there's no reason why in a completely deterministic reality reality you couldn't have those ability you could for example program a computer and program into that computer some notion of things that it wants and then another algorithm that can look at opportunities out there and weigh each of them with some sort of score and then another algorithm that then picks the opportunity with the highest score and makes the computer control a robot that then does something to achieve a certain goal. Completely mechanistic, completely deterministic in a computer algorithm and yet I would say that, well, apart from the consciousness bit, that system would have a certain degree of free will and we human beings are much more complicated than any such mechanistic system and even if we are subject to behaviors that can be completely programmed I would still say we have free will. What's even more important though is that if you would balk at that definition of free will and say well yeah but, but that isn't really free will now is it? Let me just ask you something in that case. Let me just ask you and ask you to look at my definition of free will and then tell me why what do you think is lacking from that definition? In what sense would what I call free will need to be improved before you could call it free will? How would it need to be better than what I proposed here? And you'll find, I have no doubt, that if you try and explain the difference, that anything you try to add to my definition of free will makes no sense whatsoever. For example, would you like to be able to define wants and needs that you don't actually possess? Would you like to be able to be able to establish opportunities in your environments by what supernatural means? Something that you cannot explore using your senses, for example? Would you like to be able to make choices completely randomly regardless of whether they do or don't satisfy your wants and needs? None of it makes sense. None of, nothing I think you could add to my definition of free will turns a more pure free will into anything worth possessing. So that's why I am quite adamant, first of all, that we do have free will, regardless of how impure or unimperfect you think it might be, that what we've got, what I call free will, is more than good enough for what we need. But of course, there are other considerations that you might also want to take into account, and that is to do with the whole notion of determinism because a lot of people get very hung up about the notion that the universe is or reality. Let's, let's not confuse each other with words such as universe when people can then start throwing things like multiverses and bubble universes and all sorts of nonsense like that into the mix. So let's just talk reality because that's a unary thing and that is the totality of everything. So reality, some people say, is deterministic. So therefore we can't possibly have free will. And I would say you're wrong. Reality isn't deterministic. It cannot be deterministic. In principle, for a very simple reason. If reality were deterministic, it would be like a puppet on strings and it would be manipulated by something to do whatever it 
tells it to do, whatever it determines the universe to do. Well, the problem with that conceptualization of what determination, determinism is, is that such strings would necessarily fall outside reality. And if there is something like a puppet master pulling the strings, that too would fall outside reality. But outside reality is synonymous to unreal, does not exist. There is no such thing as outside reality. So reality cannot be deterministic. What would be determining what reality does? How, by what, would what reality does be predetermined? It cannot have been. Now you could of course argue that, well, reality is deterministic and the rules that govern the, gov the that govern reality arose from within reality and i would ask you in that case from what and was that deterministic in that case what was that predetermined by it's the same fallacious argument the same nonsense as proposing a creator god because you cannot explain how the universe came to be and then trying to brush under the carpet that you cannot explain who then created god it's the same nonsense when you insist that reality is deterministic then you get yourself into the same sort of infinite regression problem as the God created the universe proposal will. It doesn't make sense. Assuming a deterministic reality will lead you straight into a logical la la land. So reality cannot be deterministic. Of course, those who like to think dualistically, those who like to indulge in dichotomous thinking, of course, poo-poo the whole notion of a non-deterministic universe. Because in their simplistic little logic, a universe that isn't deterministic is a complete and utter free-for-all. It's la-la land, it's crazy town. And of course, that is complete and utter nonsense. The universe is from as far as I can tell, internally consistent. And an internally consistent universe does have a certain level of predictability to it. Obviously, if the universe is internally consistent, then you can talk about the universe in a logical manner and your statements can be logically explored your statements about the universe can be logically explored. And that is what laws of nature's nature are. A lot of people get stuck into a mindset in which they put the cart before the horse. And they start thinking that the universe is subject, subordinate to laws of nature. Completely forgetting that we invented laws of nature, not as a means to rule the universe, but as a means to describe the universe or reality. Laws of nature's nature are a human invention, a human way of expressing how we experience what reality does. Our laws of nature are, of course, very impressive and they are nowadays astonishingly accurate in describing what reality does. But it is a huge mistake to think that therefore our laws of nature don't just describe reality, but that they somehow are reality and that our reality 
is subject to them, is subordinate to them. That is insane. That is complete and utter babbling nonsense. And once you realize that, the way out of an awful lot of conundrums is quite easy. There is no such thing as determinism in this universe. The universe just makes sense. And that's all.